Hi everyone and welcome back to our karting series. Up to now we've been working exclusively on the cart, but now we're going to start work on our track. So let's get started and put our track together. Okay, so welcome to our track builder. And um, what we're going to do is do a very basic setup for a track. We're not going to do the whole thing. We're not going to do like make it look pretty just yet. That's something you can, you can spend your own time doing as it doesn't really matter too much. The most important things are what we're going to go through today. So just for context, we're just going to add in some boundaries to our map to sort of block out what the track is going to look like. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into my modeling mode. And I'm going to do extrude polygon just to help me block out rough shapes for the environment okay and there's one I'm just going around like this basically and the cars can go on the inside of this thing so I'm gonna have the road be dictated by some inner shapes sort of like that so the car will go down like these bits here so i'm just gonna keep blocking out okay so we've got a basic round track here okay and we want to just check that our sizing is all good so i'm just going to move my player start here to what would be eventually the start line and then just drive around it and see how it behaves okay oh. so obviously way too small for my liking okay so let's change that up a little bit and set all my pieces here and let's scale this up Yeah, okay, I seem happy with that. Seems good. And we can put in some exciting things like jumps and elevation based things. I'd recommend you would as well if you're doing a, a go kart type racer, as you generally want to make it a bit more um, dynamic and interesting. So I'll just do a very like off road bit here. I'm going to go make the rough shape that we need it to be. Raise it up and complete that. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the polygroup edit. I'm going to turn off the vertex and the groups and just select the lines. Select this edge here. And we're going to bring that down. Okay. This one as well, we'll bring it down. Like that. And I'm going to make this a bit more rampy by bringing these two up. And then we can just manipulate things as we see fit. Okay. So we've got a little ramp thing. So let's see what that's looking like. I'm just going to move my player start here to be a bit more centered. So if we go to test this jump, you'll notice that our car kind of just flies. Now, the reason why that's flying is because we didn't have enough downward force on the car when it's in the air. So on my Accelerate Cart function, we've got a couple of things I want to tweak. And these are things that you'll constantly be tweaking until you get a feeling right. And that is going to be the forward force, so the actual speed of the car, as well as the vector for going down, like the downward force. So 980 is the typical gravity, but... Obviously, lots of things in play here as we're trying to do more of a cartoonish look as well. So, um, the values we've got here are going to be turned down a bit. So, I'm going to change this down from 5,000 to maybe 2,000. Let's see how that speed works, because I think it went a bit too fast for my liking. Okay, that looks not too bad. But you'll notice that the falling rate is a bit better when you go a bit slower. So, this is why it's a bit balanced is needed for these uh, two different things. 
Um, so we need to just bring up our value for the going down, this minus 980, to compensate for that. So I'm going to do minus, let's start with uh, 10,000. And it's just going to constantly go back and forth and test out and see how it looks and feels. So let's go up our ramp. Not too bad, but we obviously want to go down a lot quicker than that. So let's go up even higher. Let's try 30,000. And we'll go up on the ramp. But not too bad. We're getting pulled to the ground a lot quicker, uh, which is excellent. It's what you want. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, okay. Not too bad. But I say you tweak those numbers to whatever you're kind of feeling you want your game to feel like. So it depends on speed and what this downward force would be. And it'll it will vary based upon how fast you want your car to go. Okay, so do mess about with these numbers to get working just right for you. So next on our track here, we need to identify when the player's going the right way around the track. Now, the way we do this is with a spline. So we need to have a track identifier. So I'm going to go ahead and create a blueprint class, actor, BP track spline. And open this up. This is simply just going to be a spline component. And what we want to do with this spline component is we want to take it to be a closed loop, first of all. And I'm just going to add another point by default over here so we can see, I'll do another two actually, that, that default sort of loop there for a track. And that's all good. Now, what we're going to do is when we place this into our scene, is we want to make our spline dictate the rotation around the track. So if we go in the way that I've just been testing it in, if I go to my details panel, click on spline, and I want to select the first spline point, okay? So if I click on the first pin here, that's my first spline point there. And the direction that's gonna go it's going to go to this one next. Okay, this is spline point two. This is spline point three and four. And you can tell that's the case because the input key is changing over here on the details panel. Okay, so the order of these matters because it determines which way round you're going, how you determine who's winning and who's losing. So I'm going to put spline point two there. I'm going to put the first spline point here on roughly where the start line is. And... The next spline point I'm going to do roughly over here and this one over here. And don't forget, you probably want to add more spline points to get a better shape of your level because you do want it to follow the shape and height and elevation of it as close as possible. So when we add another spline point in here, we just want to make sure we are accounting for these shapes that we've got going on. And it's in this one, like that. And I'm going to just tweak the anchors and handles. Pick it. There we go. And go here. Another one, and for a little bit of elevation like this, I'm just going to raise up a little bit like that. Because what you'll be doing is making your character or your cart rather um, look at where they're about they are on the distance of that track. So if I go to my cart now, and let's say go on the event graph and on the tick here, I want to get the progress they have around the track. So I'm just going to move this down a little bit and add a function 
of called get track progress. And the first thing it's got to do is it's got to get hold of a reference to the track that we've placed into our scene. So I'm going to do that on the event graph and put it on begin play. So on begin play here, we're going to do get actor of class, and there should only be one of them in there. And we're going to choose our <coughs> track spline. And then we're going to promote that variable here to a variable. And that'll be track, we'll call it. Like this. So now we can get on the get track progress. We can drag out our track, get the spline. And if you go right down to the bottom, you want to get the spline component. And we're going to search for closest. And you're going to find the direct, uh, location closest to the world location. So you click on that. And the world location is going to be our actor's location for the cart. So get actor location. And the corner space here, we need to change to world space. And what we've got to do now is get the distance along that spline. So dragging from the spline again, we need to search for distance. And I can go get distance along spline at location. And I can put that in to the return value of the location there. And coordinate space, we're going to keep as world, okay, because it matches the two coordinate spaces. And this would simply returns a float. So I'm just going to make it print string at the moment, this float. And I'm going to change here the duration to zero seconds. And on the event graph, we're going to put on a tick event here get track progress so we should see here it ticking away how far along the track we are and as I go forwards you'll see the number goes higher and higher and higher and then it'll eventually hit zero when we get back to the start so let's go There you go. It went back to the zero start. So that zero point is where the start location is going to be for your track. So our player here, we're going to move there roughly. Okay. And it doesn't really necessarily matter um, about the vertical, uh, that the uh, whether you're like in on the line itself or away from the line. Ultimately the value isn't going to change too much. You just want to keep track of that value. So if I say, uh, let's do a little line here to help us indicate this. Um, how can I do this? Let's just go into shapes. You and I need to make it tangential, not tangential, perpendicular to the line. So we'll go like here, for example. And just raise up a little bit so I can see it. There we go. There we go. So if I hit the wall here, two, seven, four, three. And if I hit the wall over here, two, four, seven, seven. And if I hit over in the corner there, Two eight seven zero, so the change is correct. We want the inside line to be faster and more accurate. So that should be good if we were to use that value as a way to track whether or not who's in first, second, and third. There you go. We can now determine how far along the track we are as we progress through the race. Next, in the next episode, we're going to be working on that direction. So how do we know which direction the player is going on the track, and put up a warning if they're going the wrong way. You can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos and tutorials early for everyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.